Hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining me so late. If you're in the US, it's uh, 8 o'clock California time and 11 o'clock New York time. And it's in the middle of the night for people in Europe. So uh, the reason I did it at this time is because we have a fast growing um, clientele in India, uh, Asia, and the Far East. And that's where a lot of uh, you know our new business is coming from. So I wanted to make sure that they were awake during this presentation. So um, it's going to be just about the S&P and gold today. Those are the two that are the most clear and critical right now based on long-term wave structure. So I wanted to just review those. I don't think it will be a very long uh, presentation. It might be half an hour or something like that. It just depends on how many questions we get toward the end. Let's just move on uh, and get started here. Okay, so the um, primary thing that I've been saying lately in any mass emails, or at least quite a few lately, is that predictability of the markets is starting to increase. Gold's been predictable now, pretty highly predictable for about a year. Uh, the S&P is starting to get uh, noticeably, be noticeably better, and I expect that's going to last for at least three to five years and could go on for as much as 10 or 20 years or maybe even more. I do think that this decade will uh, become the most predictable time frame that I've ever experienced in 40 years in the S&P, and that it could go on for the rest of, you know, into mid-decade or so. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. There's um, crucial points in wave structure where things are clear or where conditions are, you know, um, more important than other times. And right now it's, it's getting fairly important for both gold and the S&P, and it implies a lot of interesting things uh, might be going on. Let me, uh, I need to go to these charts first. So let's start off with a long-term picture on the S&P. I've been waiting for a while, if you get uh, the forecasting service, I've been waiting for a while for this decline to subdivide, because in the wave theory, whenever you're forming an ABC, if the B wave is very different from the A wave, you want the C wave to be about half of A plus B in time and complexity. So the B is five, this is one, that equals six divided by two is three. So I've been waiting for this to subdivide and we now have that subdivision. And as long as the high of this year is not exceeded in the next uh, three months, then this structure will remain as it's shown. And that's ideal for this contracting triangle uh, rising wedge kind of pattern. So this is not a terminal pattern or a di diagonal triangle. This is a, triang a contracting triangle that's drifting upward because the super long-term picture for the U.S. stock market, which I've been saying for 40 years, is so powerful that it's stretching these patterns upward. So you can see here is wave three and wave four is drifting upward. And because the bigger pattern is drifting upward, that's going to affect smaller patterns even more dramatically. So the D wave of wave four was very big. And now the E wave is being pushed upward because this future strength over here is becoming so great as the world becomes industrialized, technologically advanced, um, systems um, become better and better, distribution is better and better. All those things, you know, free enterprise is spreading around the world. So this is causing an upward drift in the structure and setting us up for maybe around the year 2025 to 2027, somewhere in there for the conclusion of all this um, structure here, which will end the pattern that in the fourth wave that started back in the year 2000. And once that's over, we'll, we should see the most powerful bull market in world history. So that fits right along with my super long-term bullish count at the back of my book that I wrote in 1988. If you wanna review that, you can go to the back of my book and read it later. So the big picture hasn't changed, still looks good. The most important part of this scenario is that wave C in a contracting triangle is almost always almost exactly 61% of wave A. And right now, it's exactly 61% of wave A and exactly half of the time in complexity of A plus B. So it's the perfect time to be concluding this C wave drop. So that's one scenario that looks really good. And it keeps us sort of deep in the middle of a long structure. When you're in... Um, Whenever you have multiple scenarios, you want to have the count that is closest to the center to give you the best scenario. So in this particular case, if we're in a C wave, that C wave would be the middle of a contracting triangle. 
So it's the best possible uh, count at this point. There's other counts that could put us further in uh, you know, different kinds of structure, but that's the best scenario at this point. I don't see the alternate one here. I don't know what happened to it. Um, oh, it's on the smaller term chart. Okay, so that's the big picture. So I think we're in a C wave. The only issue is, is wave C going to be impulsive or corrective? If it's a contracting triangle, it has to be corrective. If it's part of a flat, it would have to be impulsive. So I'm going to go ahead and close this chart. But remember, this A, B, and C, this is the uh, COVID crash and the rally sense. So just remember this ABC, we're going to be zooming in on this D wave over to wave four on the next chart. Okay, so here's the big picture. This is the contracting running triangle where the crash for COVID was wave A, typical violent A wave of a contracting triangle. This is the price time window I marked long time ago. So far, the market has dropped right into the 61% price area. It's gone a teeny bit beyond it right here, but right into the 61% uh, price range of wave A. Time is going to take a few more months to, which would be like maybe December, January, when we run out of time and we'd have to start the next rally. So this scenario indicates that the S&P has gone about as low as it can go. It just needs to waste time for the next three months or so. And then we're going to start a major new bull run to significant new highs. This could go to 5,000, maybe 6,000 in the S&P over a period of, you know, maybe six to 12 months, something like that. So this is scenario number one. And in any case, we're not going to go much lower than we've already gone as of right now. And that's where wave C is a correction. Now, if, if, if it turns out that wave C turns out to be impulsive, then this is going to get a lot more complicated. Um, but this whole structure is not going to be time consuming enough to fit into the bigger picture. I don't know if I close that other chart. Let me reopen that chart for a second here. Going back to the six monthly chart, because if it turns out the C wave is impulsive, then the E wave is going to get a lot more complicated. So let me make a quick copy of this chart and just show you what would be the alternate scenario. So this wouldn't change that much, but the timing would change. So I'm going to move this, I'm trying to grab this to move it over. Okay, so if the C wave is actually impulsive and not corrective, and I could get rid of all this triangular structure here and deal more with just a typical flat. So we have a channel across the top of wave A, top of wave B, and it would end about there. Make a copy of that channel, put it down here. So we have a nearly perfect channeling of an ABC flat, and then the rally after would just be an X wave, and then we'd get another ABC to waste enough time for this market to go into the secondary um, time conclusion point. Sorry, I'm having to create this in real time. I thought it was already here, but it must have disappeared somehow. Okay. So let me just get rid of that C wave. So this will be uh, an ABC flat that channels almost perfectly followed by an X-wave rally, which could be a little bit bigger than shown here, then another ABC, and that whole thing will finally end wave four up in the 5,000 range, where this high could be you know, substantially higher. But this would be the other scenario, but it wouldn't be that different overall. It would just um, structurally be a little different. The C-wave would be corrective instead of impulsive. But overall, it's not going to be that different. We can still see an upward sideways kind of drift. The only difference is shorter term. So let me go back to the shorter term chart. So uh, let me go to this one. So keep an eye on the C wave because under this scenario, the C wave can go lower. Under this scenario, the C wave can't. So that's the, um, those are the two ways that it could unfold. Both of them would put us toward the center of a long term structure. So they're both possible. So here is my preferred scenario at this moment in time because currently the C wave doesn't look impulsive, but it could be a terminal pattern. And here's the alternate, where you've already had one, two, three 
We're working on way four. This blue line is something I predicted months ago, predicting a rally, a drop back down, another rally. So if this is going on, we'll still probably get a decent low very, very soon in the S&P, get a really nice rally back 60, 70, 80% of the drop we've had over the last couple of months, and then get a final scary sell-off where this drop and this drop will be about the same. So let me go ahead and measure what that would be. And I'll just give you a more accurate idea of the price target for that. So I'm just gonna use the vertical distance of wave A, just this drop here, make a copy of that. Well, let me use that vertical distance because whenever the B wave is dramatically larger and more time consuming than the A wave, then the C wave is gonna be basically the same size as wave A. So that puts us right where I put the blue line there. So you can see where that came from. And then the timing is not gonna change very much. You're gonna add the time of A plus B divided by two, which is this rectangle here. So if I can shrink all this up, that puts the uh, C wave you know, right into this time frame here but at a substantially lower point than where we are now. And I'm gonna give you approximate on that. Let's see. It's approximately this high right here. So that'd be about 3150, let's say. So somewhere around 3150 would be the ultimate low later this year. And that would be a pretty scary decline from where we currently are. So another, you know, 400 points and then that would be the end of this phase of the bear market. We get a big rally to new highs and then another period of correction. So these are the two ways it can go. We can basically bottom pretty soon, go sideways for a few months and then take off. Or we can have one more um, you know, nice bounce and a scary decline for probably some bad international news I would suspect coming from Ukraine, um, just as a guess. And then from there, it would recover dramatically. So maybe a Bay of Pigs kind of scenario, nuclear threat, who knows what exactly. Okay, so that's the uh, big picture um, outlook for the S&P. We could blow it up a little bit, but it doesn't change things much. So one count is that the C wave is uh, probably a neutral triangle or some kind of complex correction. And we are mostly gonna go sideways for a few months without going much lower. The other one is that it's a uh, terminal pattern, a five wave move. We're gonna bounce some and then make one more final low into this price range here. Uh, going over smaller time frames is not gonna be that helpful uh, because the big picture isn't going to um, be altered by the shorter term structure. So I'm not gonna go over the weekly chart. The big picture I think we, we covered is the best way to look at it. So let me go ahead and close these uh, charts here. Okay, so for the gold market, I've been saying this for a very long time. A lot of people thought it was crazy. Uh, as we were topping up in this uh, 2000 range, that gold could be setting the stage for a drop all the way you know, back below this low and maybe eventually below $600. Um, the only logical explanation I can give for such action, because this is what wave structure pretty much currently mandates based on long-term uh, wave patterns, is that cryptocurrencies, probably Bitcoin is going to be the default exchange eventually for the whole world and uh, so gold will become less and less of a hedge against inflation it'll just be a precious metal for industrial use and jewelry and things like that but that uh, bitcoin or some cryptocurrency will become a more um, you know easily held and exchanged form of value uh, around the world because it's if it's a at least if it's Bitcoin, there's some others that may not fall into this category, but if it's Bitcoin, it's indestructible, it's uncorruptible, it's uninflatable, it's super transmittable, it's potentially untaxable. So all the incredible attributes of a good currency, and that means the governments around the world would eventually start to lose power because they wouldn't have the power to print money anymore, and that could change the whole landscape of governments all over the world. So it could be a, a big deal long term. Okay, so as we zoom in, look at this B wave right here. This B wave is this whole thing right here. Based on evidence, we have violent price action, which is the start of something new because it's the biggest, fastest rally since the high. Has to be wave A because we're in a counter trend move, which is much slower than the previous drop. So we have wave A, wave B. The C wave is like a perfect double zigzag to the high. 
And then since then, we've started what appears to be an elongated flat with the target uh, back below the top of wave A. So the focus on the next chart is going to be this structure here, an A down, a B up, and we're in the C wave down. And that's been my outlook for quite some time. Uh, so here you can see the A down, which was an expanding triangle, the ABC for the B up with a terminal C wave that peaked right around where expected, and it concluded at a lower high based on behavior. And that drop was very surprising and shocking to most people, but it was perfectly predictable by wave structure. If this is a terminal, we wanted to retrace the whole thing in 50% of the time. This green rectangle is 50% of the time, and that's whole complete retracement. So it did exactly what it needed to do in exactly the right amount of time. This blue line was my prediction all the way from the very beginning, and it did exactly what it needed to do. So gold appears to have now finished wave one of this C wave decline. That should be an elongated C wave. So what I've done is taken the time of A plus B, added them together uh, to give us the time for wave C because we don't have enough time to form an entire five wave move you know, through halfway, through the halfway point. Uh, so we've got to add A plus B to give us a lot more time for all that to happen. And as far as where we are within the C wave, this is a corrective decline. It looks like a double zigzag for wave one. So we know wave one is corrective. Um, I assume we're in wave two right now, which we have wave A down. I mean, it's our wave A up, wave B down, and we're waiting for a C wave rally to finish wave two. And then from there, we can start a more substantial decline. So it looks like gold. Um, basically maybe a month or two from ending one more rally and then starting a much larger decline because this structure right here whenever a b wave this would be the b wave is bigger than the a wave the direction the b wave is moving is indicating power so if the b wave is bigger than the a wave and it's going down it means power in the downward direction so in this case it's warning us longer term that gold after one more bounce is preparing for a much larger drop and that's going to be probably where you know it becomes more and more obvious that there's going to be some kind of transition away from gold being a hedge of inflation or maybe just that inflation has peaked and it's going to start slowing down and with interest rates going up maybe a lot of uh, money comes out of circulation possibly you know because of the uh, experience of the last two years maybe a lot of things get changed and the government slows down its spending because it's aggravating a lot of Americans at least. So, you know, things could change quite dramatically if gold does what current current structure implies. It would just mean either declining inflation um, and uh, possibly less importance of gold in the inflation uh, hedge category. Okay, so I don't know if the weekly charts are going to be of a lot of use. Let's just take a quick look. This is just a blow up of the monthly chart. You can see the terminal that occurred, the one, two, three, four, five. Fifth wave is the longest, two and four overlapped. It spiked above the upper one, three trend line, typical of a fifth wave extension. It didn't terminate until here, and then it started collapsing, and it did exactly what the first uh, confirmation phase after a terminal should do, which is retrace all of it in half the time or less. And then you can clearly see this rally is quicker, this one's slower, but it's bigger. So this implies weakness in the downward trend, but the pattern is forming upwards. We have wave A up. Wave B should finish very soon. I think this now qualifies as the biggest, fastest rally since the high. So the odds are decently good that wave B is over. And we're going to rally for a few weeks up into this territory here. That'll finish wave two or whatever this label turns out to be, but I think it'll be wave two. And then we'll start a drop. And that next drop needs to be larger than this first one because of the weakness implied by this B wave. So that means we're going to have a very substantial drop well below 1500 and possibly below 1400 going into mid or late uh, next year. So that's the uh, the big picture on the gold market. Go ahead and close these charts. I can probably take, uh, you know, it's not only 20 minutes that we've done this and I can probably take a few questions, if somebody wants to uh, type them in the question and uh, answer section. Let's see, I have several that have come in. Um, somebody from Nepal is just saying hi. <laughs> um, and Kevin's saying thanks for taking Asia into consideration. Um, uh, Sakar, at what point would you say C is impulsive? 
So, Sakar, can you tell me which market you're talking about? I don't know if you're talking about gold or the S&P. And then uh, Bahad is saying, is gold monthly and weekly considered flat since it takes more time? Um, yeah, let me reopen the gold uh, chart. One second. I'm just going to stick with monthly and half yearly because those are the only two time frames that are really important for this discussion. Okay, Vahid, I'm going to see if I can find you in the list. There's 200 people, 550 or so people, you know, signed up, but a lot of them are in the U.S. and Europe, and of course, they're probably sleeping right now. But uh, I'm going to see if I can unlock your mic, and maybe you can. Uh... Okay, if you're okay opening your mic, I just unlocked it manually. If you'd like to uh, open it up on your end, let me go through your question again. So you're saying. In gold monthly and weekly, you considered flat since March 2021. Wave C of that flat takes more time in combination of A and B, also wave three of C. That's a very long uh, statement. So you uh, you talking about this chart here? You're gonna have to open your mic if you want to be able to interact. Maybe you don't know how to do that. Um, so I'm not quite sure what exactly you're saying. Uh, let me see. How can I bring. ask? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Hello, Mr. Galinili. So you're talking about this chart here? What are you talking about? Uh, my question is for a uh, previous chart. On gold? Yes. Okay, so the gold monthly, this one here? Yes. Uh, okay. uh, you consider it a flat? Uh, science uh, March 2021. Yes, yes. over there. That's yes. wave A. It's it's wave A, and after that you uh, plot B wave. Okay. A up, B down. Yes, A A right. A plus B, A plus B. It takes less than time. Right. right. Uh, that's because in a terminal pattern, if you remember in my book, I mentioned the concept of supplemental price and time that occurs only in terminal patterns and triangles. So after that time period runs out, let me just copy this to show you. After this time runs out, if you're in a terminal, you can go a little bit beyond that as part of the phenomenon of the supplemental price and time. So when you take A plus B, the fifth wave is allowed to take a little extra time because that's the supplemental time and the supplemental price where it's going beyond the price you expect and beyond the time that would normally apply to most corrections. So that's why I did that. Okay. Yeah. And is that an exception for terminal? Yes. It only applies to terminals and contracting uh, terminals and triangles and usually just terminals. Okay. I have another question. Uh, in uh, in a C wave, uh, wave three of a C in flats is a shortest time uh, with uh, wave one and wave five. Are you asking me? Can it be shorter than one or five? Uh, uh, wave wave three, wave three of a C. Right. Is short you're on this. You're talking about on this chart, or just theoretically? Yes, this chart. Uh, okay, well, wave it, three takes more time than wave one. Wave five and three take the same amount of time from high to low. Okay, wave three is ha it has a short price of a nope, wave one. Nope, nope. Wave three nope. is longer than wave one. You oh. have to do this on a logarithmic scale, and wave three oh. is a little bit longer than wave one. It looks okay. like it's shorter, but it's not. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, let me see what other questions we have coming in here. Um, okay, y'all don't type them too quick because I'm not gonna be able to get to all these and I can't keep uh, track of them as they move too fast. Can we have a horizontal diametric? Is, I don't wanna ask any complex questions. I just rather talk about what we're currently looking at the S&P. I don't do any Indian stock market analysis. So I can't do that. How do you determine what pattern is finally forming in the E-leg of the fourth wave in the S&P? Um, okay, so I think you're talking about let me go back to these two charts. 
And this is Nitin. Nitin, I'm gonna see if I can unlock your mic. Okay, then if you're okay unlocking your mic. Unmuted. Your mic. Okay, so uh, you're talking so, about this s and structure, structure here, right? Structure here. Can, yes, can you put, yes. Can you turn just... your mic volume down or move it away because it's creating a terrible echo? Um, you're talking about how do I know this is a contracting triangle? Is yes, that that's question? right, Glenn. Okay. Yeah, whether okay. it be uh, whether it be a triangle or it be a flat, finally. Okay. The reason for this is because number one, the massive difference in complexity between A and B leaves us only two choices: either a flat or a contracting triangle. You don't, uh, you're not going to have really any other possibility. A diametric wouldn't work. Symmetricals wouldn't work. So you only have those two choices: a flat or a contracting triangle. And when the C wave is exactly 61% of the A wave and takes exactly half the time of A plus B, that's a very good setup for contracting triangle. And then the other um, reason is when you go to S&P monthly charts, you can see that this decline does not look impulsive. It could be if we go into terminal structure, but a terminal is not a normal five wave move, it's like a corrective five wave move. Um, it could be if it's a terminal, but it looks corrective. So if it's corrective, then the C wave is a correction and you automatically have to be in a triangle if wave C is a correction. So that's the reason why the odds are much higher right now that we're in the C wave of a contracting triangle and that it's gonna end pretty soon. Okay, so as far as, what to, watch out, as, far as what to watch out for, if y'all see the market bounce really soon, but not super violent, and then it breaks this low, then the more bearish scenario is in effect and we're going to retrace quite a bit and something really scary on an international basis is going to happen. If it just uh, recovers slowly and meanders for a few more months, then this count will remain the best choice. And then for some reason, late this year, early next, we're going to have a spectacular rally uh, into new high, all-time new highs. Okay? Okay. Yes, so Glenn, thank on. you. Okay. okay. Um, see is that any alternative um is that i i'm not going to go over weekly charts because it's too short term i want this analysis to last a long time because it's a sort of a crucial juncture for these two markets right now um can the fifth wave in a terminal be less than 161 percent of wave three yes if the fifth wave is the longest wave in a terminal that's the only time you don't have to actually have a truly qualified extended wave. So if the third wave is the longest, it might be just 110 or 20 or 30 percent of the next longest. If the fifth wave is, it might be 110, 20, 30 percent. First wave, same thing. But normally it's going to be close to 161 percent. When the first wave is the longest, the third wave will generally be around 65, 70 percent of wave one. When the third wave is the longest, it'll probably be around 130 to 161 percent of wave one. When the fifth wave is, it's probably going to be close to about 161% of wave one, uh, but those are just you know generalities. Okay, let's see. Um, I cannot take notes fast enough. Okay. Yeah, as far as getting a copy of this, you should, if you signed up, which you had to, I think, to be in the class, uh, go to webinar. Should send you an email when this presentation is over. Should send you an email um, of the class, and you can review it later. And then I do have a few um, final closing remarks when we finish this part, so don't uh, leave too quick. Um, says, like S&P, does gold have alternate accounts? Um, no, gold doesn't have any <coughs> alternate accounts right now because it's doing exactly what's expected in you know precision, precise uh, detail. So there's no reason to have an alternate account. Um, it's going to take a little bit longer, but to know when wave C is impulsive or corrective on this chart is going to require a low comfortably below this current low. So if you see a drop, let's say right near the old high of 2020, then you can probably assume wave C is impulsive and that the market's going to go, you know, bottom somewhere around 3150 or so. Maybe you can go a little bit lower, but around 3150. 
if it doesn't go much lower and we bounce soon and just waste time, then the C-wave correction remains the best choice. That currently is the best choice, but it would start to fade away if we go much lower than what we've already done. Okay. Um, I'm having to read these. Every time y'all send me a new question, it changes the position of the text and I have to keep moving it. I don't look at copper, so I don't know. Um, I don't look at the dollar, don't look at Nifty 50. Remember, wave structure is very complicated and detailed and takes time. So there's only so many markets I can follow. Uh, I don't have any assessment of any other markets except gold in the S&P today. Um, okay, I don't follow silver. Do I have a bullish count for gold? No, I don't have any bullish counts for gold at all. Um, okay. Please ask your view on, yeah, um, Tron, okay. Um, I really don't have a concrete opinion on Tron or any of the cryptos right now. Wave structure is nearly impossible to come up with in any of the uh, cryptos that has satisfied me for 10 years. And I think that's because it's a different kind of animal than what, uh, you know, is normal. Cryptos, eventually, let's say Bitcoin becomes the default standard of the world for uh, as a currency then it will become super stable. It won't be going up and down like the stock market. It'll be like the value of gold because even though the dollar value is going up and down, you know, it takes say $100 now to buy something and $200 a few years from now or 10 years from now, that doesn't happen with gold. The same amount of gold buys about the same thing as it did 100 years ago. Um, technology and the complexity of production makes things a little more expensive, but generally speaking, cost of a car, cost of a house can still be gotten for about as much gold as you could have gotten 50 years ago. So it's the dollar that's changing value, not the value of gold. So I think that's gonna be the same thing uh, for Bitcoin. Eventually it should become super stable. So it's not a growth progression um, market like the stock market that should constantly grow and improve as efficiencies increase and technology gets better. It's gonna stabilize and flatten out. So it's, um, you know, Cryptos are going to be very difficult to analyze with wave theory, if at all. So as far as Tron is concerned, I don't see any evidence that it's ready to go up again. Uh, I did a talk a few months back, maybe half a year ago, about uh, Tron. And it turned out it was the only, only crypto in the world that I know of that didn't drop a lot during the catastrophic decline in Bitcoin over the last six months or more. Um, so it held its value where all the others dropped dramatically. So at least, you know, it held its own. Uh, longer term, I still have, you know, information that a lot of good things could happen to improve the situation in Tron. I have a lot of money uh, in Tron. I'm just waiting for it to uh, uh, start showing signs of accumulation, which I don't see yet. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you have plans? No, I don't plan on any services for the Nifty. Let me go ahead and uh, wrap this up because I'm getting a lot of uh, similar kinds of questions. So let me just go back to my uh, presentation and just sort of give you all the uh, synopsis here. Okay, um, so the long-term structure in the S&P um, and gold, they're at pretty major turning points probably with the S&P potentially poised for a significant low um, preparing for a massive rally to new highs. The only alternate scenario is if it keeps pushing lower or makes a comfortable low below the current lows, that we'll have one more big shakeout before a major rally starts. For those of you who have my book or ever were around when Cycles Magazine existed, my super long-term bullish count for the S&P remains in effect. And it looks like um, the, what you could call maybe a mega cycle top is still projected for around the year 2065. So don't let all the gloom and doom and scary news and all those things impact your long-term investment approach because, you know, the scariness is a sign that we're approaching the end of a 25-year corrective environment. If you go back to 2000, the initial massive market decline, which was 40, 50% or something like that, that really didn't have a very strong psychological impact on the, you know, the, at least the, in America. Um, it was disappointing, but it wasn't a financial shock, so to speak, because people had made so much money from 1982 to 2000 
that it was just a retracement and a disappointment. And that's typical of the beginning of fourth waves. The 2008-2009 period was the real financial um, devastating part. And now we're dealing mostly with psychological uh, trauma that there's gonna be a lot of bad news, a lot of social disruptions and you know, political turmoil, international turmoil, all those things, but the market's not gonna be going down that much. And that's a sign, should be a clear sign, that we're at the end of the bear market. So when bad news doesn't push the market a lot lower, you know you're at the tail end of the bear market. So keep that in mind over the next you know, two or three years. And if you see really bad news come out and the market's not dropping much, that's an indication that we are you know, coming to the end of this uh, bear market. Okay, well, that's uh, the end of the presentation. It's a lot quicker than what I normally do, but it was just to cover these two markets in a quick kind of way. So I appreciate uh, everyone um, you know, coming to join in on it. And if you want to get a copy, you should get one automatically from GoToWebinar and you can review it later. So thanks a lot. Y'all have a good night.